to eat the microphone, apparently. I've got to really eat this. So let's see how we get on. Well, thank you all for attending. It's a very hot afternoon after there, and I don't think the black screens actually help. They're very good conductors of heat. Okay, if I sort of put a spin on this in terms of safety, when we're trying to implement a societal change, and this is a very important, very intimate societal change, because we're all getting old. And what's more, we're getting older for a longer time, to be quite honest. If you're trying to implement a societal change, then actually you have to have a very safe, evidence-based program to do that. Part of the work we do under this label, the Food for Health Island ticket, which is sponsored principally by Enterprise Island, is to involve the research capacities of the universities with the companies to try and design and implement strategies against major health issues. And one of the major health and societal issues we've got is exactly this, the age-related change in leach tissue mass. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna talk about a cell to society change because a lot of the evidence is based on the fact that we have a mechanism by which we can actually alter a function. So I'll proceed on that line and hope I'll cope you with me. This is the challenge to society. Effectively what happens is that as you mature and develop from early age, at adult age you come to maturation of most of your body's systems and that allows you function. From maturation you then start to decline. And this rate of decline is really very important to you. Because if you can offset this rate of decline, then you will lead a more active, healthy life. At some stage, depending what the functional capacity is, you will reach a point whereby you'll become less able to do what you want to do and therefore you'll have a reduced quality of life. One of the features that assists you in that quality of life is your muscle. And if you pinch your inch at the moment, if you have a look at yourself and you see how taut you are at the moment, it'll give you an indication of how much muscle you currently have. If you're a young adult and you take your thigh muscle, and I take a CT scan through your thigh muscle, you'll see here that this is the muscle here, and there's the bone. You've got a nice, densely packed tissue. Okay? It's in good order and is probably appropriate to your activity level at this age. And that becomes a marker for how you're then going to decline with age. The decline in that muscle over time is actually age specific. It declines at about three to eight percent per decade. Three to eight percent a decade. And it's a silent disease. You don't know it's happening. It's a silent disease because this happens. If I now enhance this image, the mass doesn't change. In fact, for most of us, the mass actually increases. But the composition changes. This thigh no longer looks like this thigh. The proportion of lean tissue mass has been substituted by fat mass. And what's more, the quality of the muscle, as you can see here if you contrast these two, the quality of the muscle actually has been eroded by the fact you've got fat infiltration into the muscle. So we have not only what we call an age-related sarcopenia, sarcopenia, the loss of flesh, we also have an age-related dynopenia. The muscle that you have is no longer as good as the muscle that you used to have in performing its function. Does that make sense? Okay, that's good. Because if you, in the UK, the only time this is normally observed is when women try to put 10K into the overhead bin Okay, on an airplane. And that's the first time probably most people reflect on the fact, hey, I used to be able to do this, I now can't. Okay, so what strategies must we involve to try and offset this? Well, the first thing we have to recognize is that we don't want to intervene here. Once you've already been in this decline, it's very much more difficult to reverse that process than it is to maintain your healthy muscle tissue. So we intervene here. We intervene at the point at which you start to decline. Okay? And that really is healthy aging. Okay? What do the experts tell us? The experts tell us that we have to have new strategies, dietary strategies, lifestyle strategies to reverse this decline. 
The dietary strategies have to be very specific. They have to be an advisory. They have to have some foundation, some scientific basis. And what, of course, we're trying to do is in this intervention is to slow this rate of decline. And we call our ability to change this effect a sort of a malleability. How malleable is the tissue? How responsive is it to change? And what sort of factors can initiate those changing processes? Okay, the title is Sell to Society. We're informed by this by what we know of how we regulate the accretion of lean tissue mass, of protein basically. So in the cell, we identify from our cellular mechanisms what actually affects the rate of protein synthesis. And we come up with, from the nutritional perspective, two very highly sensitive, exquisitely sensitive mechanisms. One is the provision of the breakdown of these proteins, which is amino acids. And of those amino acids, the essential amino acids, these are the ones which you cannot actually make yourself in your body, but you have to get them in from the diet. And there's two components to that. These essential amino acids have to be in high quality. And the second thing is, this one amino acid, a thing called leucine, acts not only as a substrate, but it also acts as a regulator. So leucine, independent of the essential amino acids, is good for the development of muscle mass. All those processes are assisted by other things, principally growth type of hormones, such as insulin and the insulin life growth factor. So your nutrient formulation that you induce, that you advise people to take, has to have a high quality of these things, okay, and assisted by the secretion of these two quality hormones, both of which will then optimize this process. Now, okay, we eat food. And when we eat food, we eat normally about three times a day. So what we actually have to consider is what do we eat per meal and how does that translate to the production of our muscle? In that translation, okay, of what we know from the cell into actually what our behaviors are, we find this. We find that every time we eat, this protein synthesis is increased, and we go into the fasting phase after we've eaten, then the protein degradation occurs. And we have this cycling effect of synthesis and degradation. The net effect if the two are the same is no change in muscle mass. But we've seen over aging that that's not true. We actually get a gradual decline in muscle mass. So something is happening when we eat every time here, either not to stimulate this optimally, or to promote a greater degree of breakdown. We think that it comes down to what you eat in your protein, the type of protein per meal. So if I demonstrate this to you. If I said this muscle can be maximally activated or optimally activated, I come to this line. But as you can see, every time I eat, I don't necessarily achieve those maximal activations. Okay? So one strategy might be, therefore, to attend to optimize the meal level of protein synthesis by optimizing these effects here. And if I do that, I can add a supplement to every meal, and I can bring this up to an optimum. That's the strategy. That's how science from the cell is informing how we're now going to make this work in society. Okay, so how much protein do we take in per meal? Well, it may be, you may be familiar with this or you may not know, it basically says, look, breakfast you take a small amount of protein, lunch you take a little bit more, only normally in your main meal do you get the optimal amount. So if you supplement, what effectively happens is, we bring all these other meals up to the same level. This means that over a, a year, rather than having one times per day or 360 events per year, you have three times a day or a thousand times per year. When you supplement, you use a good protein. Milk happens to be a very good protein, which has all the relevant features. High protein content, high amino acids, high leucine. We feed according to body mass in an RCT, and we get this. The results of an RCT, carefully conducted, show you this. 
that if you use a balanced control, the change of lean tissue mass over 24 weeks, that's six months, actually is virtually negative. That's the standard level of decline you'll get. But if you do the supplemental program, you get about a half kilo increase. That's a 0.7 kilo difference between the two, which approximates to 1%. So what have we done? In taking the cell-based work, formulated a supplement which activates that process optimally, we've been able to intervene and slow the rate of decline of lean tissue mass. And we now know that this malleable range is of the order of one kilogram per annum. If you want to know anything a little more about the Food for Health Island group, we've got a Food for Health Island logo. This is the paper it comes from. And here's the DOI and the reference to that if you wish. I've also put on the front of the slide a, a link to the Atlas of Science, which gives you um, a, a sort of layman's take on, on this aspect of this work. And I'll take any questions that you wish from that. Thank you very much indeed.